morning and welcome to our morning prayers on this Sunday the 13th of December. It's really good to worship with you this morning. You may well be thinking this isn't a live stream from the church as it normally would be. Uh, I am leading some worship for you this morning, uh, pre-recorded so I can be with you uh, on the comments and join in. Uh, because we are self-isolating at home our youngest is having waiting for his results for his covid test after having a persistent cough uh, so i to make it easier penny is uh, leading the service in the church and i am doing something online here uh, so we can still do some live streaming and join you that way so we hope that you find this time uh, one of blessing and being able to meet with Jesus together and as we begin our time uh, as a reminder of who God is as we continue to journey these difficult times we remember these words from Nahum the Lord is good a strong refuge when trouble comes God is close to those who trust in him Today is also the third Sunday of Advent and we will light a candle remembering God's love amongst us. Last Sunday it was peace and the week before that hope. And today as we remember this third candle we think of God giving Zachariah and Elizabeth a son called John in their old age. Um, John speaking to the people bravely in the desert, denying his own comforts and prepared to die for what he believed. And John taught that we should share what we have with others, treat each other kindly and show God's love as we're speaking about God's kingdom coming near and uh, repenting and turning to God. And he did this because he cared for people and God is showing his love through his words so let's light our three candles this morning as we remember god's hope peace and love let's pray love is like a candle shining in a dark place as we look at the lights of these candles we celebrate the hope love and peace we have in Christ blessed are you sovereign Lord just and true to you be praise and glory forever your prophet John the Baptist was witness to the truth as a shining and burning light May we, your servants, rejoice in his light and so be led to witness to you, Lord of our coming kingdom, Jesus, our Saviour and King of the ages. Blessed be God for ever. Amen. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. As we begin our time, let's praise God with our next song, Give Thanks to the Lord. Thank you. 
has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. We come now to our psalm, which is Psalm 23. And uh, do encourage you to join in saying it with us, um, but you can also just listen and use it as inspiration for your praises this morning. So Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right path for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. We're now going to share in a Bible reading together and Ben will bring us that now. So the Bible reading comes from Isaiah um, chapter 40, uh, verses 3 to 5. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain, and the glory of the Lord will be revealed and all people will see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. So the reading that we heard today has a wonderful picture within it about the way being prepared for God to reveal himself, not just to the people of God, Israel, but that all people will see it together. And what really struck me, I don't know about you, but this picture of every valley being raised up, every mountain being and hill being made low, the rough ground becoming level, the rugged places as a plain. And I love the fact that when we hear that, it reminds me that actually God's coming wasn't into somewhere perfect, uh, somewhere already clear, already level and smooth, but in the wilderness and in the rugged places and in the desert, uh, the way of the Lord is prepared. And I believe that God wants to speak to us today about his love for us and the world that love that he would choose to come and live with us, not needing perfection to come, but desiring us to prepare room in our hearts with repentance, that roads may be made there to welcome him. So as we think about that together, let's pray. Father God, thank you for your word that we've heard today. Lord Jesus, help us as we seek to follow you and to live it out. Holy Spirit, fill us afresh, reveal truth that we may be changed from the inside out. In Jesus' name, Amen. So as we begin, we might also recognise these words from John the Baptist. In the Gospel of Matthew, it says this, In those days John the Baptist came, preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is he who was spoken of through the prophet Isaiah, a voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. In the days of Isaiah and even in the days of Jesus when John the Baptist was living, roads weren't 
uh, like what we have today in Dagenham. Uh, for some of you, you might think, well, yeah, absolutely, some of our roads are terrible. Um, but for all the potholes we might find sometimes, um, generally we have tarmac and uh, generally everyone can use them and you can get to different places. And if you think even in terms of motorways, they're really common. We can travel on roads and it's actually quite an available thing to the masses. But in those times, roads were a lot more like tracks or maybe just used routes that have kind of turned into a track or a road rather than something specifically paved so that everyone could get around easily. And the picture of highways in Isaiah's time was in the city of Babylon, if anything, it was processional highways where um, the gods that they worshipped would be par paraded down um, to show sort of who they were, their glory, their strength, etc. And in Jesus' time of the Roman Empire, even then highways were more occasional, built for the prestige of a king or a ruler, built for their command, you know, in order for their importance and their um, help in getting about, not for the purpose of the local inhabitants to have a better time of it. And in fact, local inhabitants, if a king or a ruler was coming, they'd be prepared, they'd be ordered to prepare a highway for him. So it kind of, sound of, kind of sounds familiar, doesn't it? If we hear these kind of things alongside what we've heard in Isaiah, there's a bit of a resonance there, isn't there? So there's a familiarity, even in the time of God's people being exiled when they're here in Isaiah. Um, and also Jesus' time when John the Baptist was around as well. There is one thing that is different, though, that you might spot the difference with. And that is, although there is a preparing of the way for God, um, it's a different kind of road. God's glory will be revealed and all people will see it together. But it won't just be for the few. It will come through repentance to people's hearts. And it won't be so one-sided. It won't be, you know, like a normal king that they might have thought of. Actually, Jesus would come and make the way and do some heavy lifting. The way the valleys, the mountains and the hills are being moved, that's, I believe, what Jesus is, has done through what he did on the cross. And our part is actually more recognising that we need God's help. That's what a lot of repentance is, is realising our need for God, our need for his forgiveness and turning to him and turning away from other ways, from our own self-direction or from ways that would take us away from God. And it's because God loved the world so much that he did that, that he sent Jesus to make a way. For Jesus to be the way, the truth and the life. So that we could come to Father God through him. And as we turn to Jesus in repentance, as we change direction, we find the way is made in him. And God's glory is revealed in Jesus. There's still a journey to make. It's not always easy to journey that road of following Jesus in our lives. But there is a way where there wasn't one before. There is a road where there wasn't one before. I'd seen a picture recently that really um, stood out to me. It came into my mind as I was thinking about this. And it feels like it illustrates this point of what Jesus has done really well. Um, our friends at St Mary's, St Mary's Church have had a bit of land at the back of their car park, which had not been touched for a really long time. And they decided they wanted to clear it to make it usable for the community and for them as a church. And um, the picture should appear on the screen with uh, my video here. And you can see the difference in the land heights in the pictures here. It is far from level, very rugged and rough. And compared with the rest of the level of the land is a bit like a hill, not quite a mountain but definitely like a hill. And I wonder if sometimes it helps us to see something that reminds us of the starkness of the picture that this prophet is speaking about. Granted, it's not a desert, uh, maybe a little bit wilderness-like, 
but it gives us a link from their world into ours that uh, is a little bit more perhaps recognisable. This is the picture of the land pretty much cleared. And even just in the marks on the wall, you can tell the difference in height. And between the, pi between the pictures, it's quite literally a levelling um, and the rough ground being taken away. And this is the kind of heavy lifting, I believe, that God is wanting to remind us that he has done through Jesus to make a way to have a relationship with him. Because he loved the world so much, this snapshot gives us a little inkling. I mean, it's nowhere near as much um, a picture of God's love for us, but it gives us just a little bit of a picture of, of God, how much Jesus has done for us in love, in levelling uh, that place for us to come in repentance to God. Now, of course, we know that Jesus has already been born um, so we're not necessarily waiting um, for this levelling in the, in the same way as perhaps uh, the people were um, who hadn't you know, encountered Jesus yet, um, perhaps those who were waiting in exile at the time. But I hope it reminds us of why there's so much to celebrate at Christmas with Jesus' birth, that Jesus' birth matters um, and a bit like this kind of work can be, the emphasis wasn't on making a, everything perfect. Jesus wasn't born into a palace. He was born into the reality of, of the, the stable and not having room for him in that time. The emphasis was making a way, uh, not on perhaps our worldly pictures of how things should be perfect. And I have a question for us that I think God is maybe wanting us to think about. Will we prepare room in our hearts as we lead up to Christmas? Will we listen to the words um, of John the Baptist uh, that were used to prepare people for Jesus coming into his ministry? Will we repent? Will we turn to God? Will we confess our wrongs uh, the way the people did when they responded to John the Baptist? We may already be baptised, we may not, but will we allow God to wash away our sin and make a commitment to be following his path? Let's pray. Father God, we thank you that you love the world so much through Jesus that you were to make a way for us. And Lord Jesus, we're sorry for the ways we don't recognise our need to change direction and to turn to you. Holy Spirit, please fill our hearts afresh, cleanse our hearts and help us to be those who would prepare the way for Jesus in our hearts and in our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come now to a time of prayer and you may well want to comment online with your own prayers or prayer requests or you may just want to pray quietly where you are, however we choose to. Let's trust in God's presence as we pray together. But now thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned. And the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Saviour. Father God, inspire and lead those who hold authority in this and every nation of the world. Guide them in the ways of justice and peace. And in this time, please do bring your own prayers to God for countries you've seen on the news that may be on your heart. And that can be either online or where you are.
let not the needy be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Make us instruments of your peace and let your glory be over all the earth. Lord Jesus, grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you, that the life of Christ may be revealed in us. Strengthen all of us who minister in your name. Give us all courage to proclaim your gospel. Make us alive to the needs of your community, our community. Help us to share each other's joys and burdens. invite you now to bring prayers to God for those who we care for, who are unwell or grieving. And let's just spend some time naming them in God's presence today, if it's appropriate in the comments or perhaps just where we are. Deepen our compassion for all who suffer from sickness, grief or trouble. In your presence may they find their strength. We remember those who have died. Father, into your hands we commend them. We praise you for all your saints who have entered your eternal glory. Bring us all to share in your heavenly kingdom. And finally, we lift ourselves, our friends, our families. Look with kindness on our homes, our communities, those who are on our hearts and minds. Grant that your love may grow in our hearts. And help us, Lord, to witness to your love, to the, your wonderful road to our Father in heaven given through Jesus, that people may repent and come to know the life and love that can be found in you, Lord. Keep us good, Lord, under the shadow of your mercy in this time of uncertainty and distress. Sustain and support the anxious and fearful and lift up all who are brought low that we may rejoice in your comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love. In Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. And we join our prayers together as we say the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. If you have been responding to God for the first time recently, or you would like to explore faith further, or you'd just like some support at this time, please do private message us or use the contact details on our Facebook page or a church near you. We would love to hear from you. As part of our worship to God, we give an offertory. If you would like to know more or you would like to give, please do follow the link in the description to our safe and secure online giving page. In terms of notices, uh, there was a video at the end at, sorry, at the beginning. Uh, if you missed that, please do have a look back and uh, and watch through. I know there's quite a few notices, but with Christmas, there's a lot of things that are happening. Please do take a look. Um, that If there's anything you're interested in attending that is in the building, that will need to be booked in advance. So please do contact us if it's online uh, then that's obviously not necessary but please do take a look and see what is happening so you can decide that 
as we uh, close our time together, let's worship God in singing together, love divine, all loves excelling. Thank you for joining us today as we have prayed this morning online alongside those who are worshipping in the building. As we finish our time together, let's finish in God's blessing. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. It was so good to worship with you. Goodbye and God bless.